Um, my name is Mateusz Pusz. I represent EPAM systems at ISO C++ committee. I'm also a C++ trainer, so I take most of my notes in the form of slides, and I decided to share some of them with you today. Uh, the before we go and talk about the features, maybe we'll talk a, a bit about what is the current status of C++ uh, 20 version. Um, probably you know that those pictures, those pictures are from CPP. Dot, uh, CPP um, dot, yeah, from the ICO C++ uh, website. Um, we are here, yes? Right now we had uh, three meetings uh, with C++20 features. It was Toronto, uh, Albuquerque, and the latest one was, was Jacksonville. Uh, you can see that for C++20 we already merged concepts. We merged some of the concurrency stuff. We also started new technical specifications for reflection and leap fundamentals. Um, ranges are done, modules are done, but they are not ready yet to be merged to C++20. Coroutines, probably the same, but, but we'll see. Mm. And networking is done, but it's waiting for, for uh, executors. Um, you can see that there is a lot of things going right now on the plate, and there is a lot of parallel work being done. It is being done by many groups. Basically, this is how proposals and papers and features come to the language. Um, we don't write the language as ICC++ committee, yes? We don't create features. We process papers that come to the committee. Some of those, of course, are written by the committee members, but still we process papers, not write the language uh, features by ourselves. Those papers come from the community, the guys like you, from us, from study groups that are Right now we have 16 of them, two of, two of them were created uh, lately, SG15 for tooling and SG16 for Unicode. And all those papers go through the evolution groups for the core language and for the library. Those groups are this, uh, decide whether, whether the uh, feature um, suits our needs and is ready to be standardized or not and provides the feedback to the authors. And when those groups uh, decide that feature is okay, they pass it to so-called wording groups. And at that point, we can say that this feature is nearly done to the language. Wording groups are core working group and library working group. And they are responsible ma mainly for fixing the wording and for mm, fixing the defects that are reported for the um, paper. After that, when those groups are accepting the paper, it is merged into the uh, draft of the standard. And once per uh, few years, we mm, submit a new version, yes? R the next one should be C++20 if everything works fine. That goes then to the higher bodies in ISO for standardization process and for publication. This is basically how it works. Uh, these are the major features being worked on right now. I will not talk much about them right now because they are still work in progress and they are subject to change. This is the uh, table from the Herb Sutter's notes at the end of Jacksonville meeting. Basically, we expect that coroutines, contracts, part of ranges, part of modules may land up in C++20. And the other stuff probably will uh, will not be in the standard. There will be technical specifications for reflections and executors in C++20 timeframe, but they will probably will be merged to the standard itself in C++23. Um, networking, future to then, async to are done, but they are waiting for executors to be complete, complete and executors are still here. So that th those features are also hanging and waiting for, for, for executors and that's why they are not being merged to the standard. Mm, last thing before we go into the features. Um, all features come from papers, as I said. If you would like to read more about specific features or mm, you're interested in a specific subject, you can find easily all the papers that I will present with this uh, hyperlink. You just provide slash and the paper number or the revision and you will find the exact paper. You can also always type things like standard concepts or basically any TS name, and you will find the latest draft of the document. So it's easy way to find the latest version of the standard draft, for example. Okay, so uh, let's move to the new features being already merged into the standard. 
because I will scope today mostly on the things on the, the things that are already decided and accepted by the by the committee. There are a lot of th those things, so probably we'll not have time to talk about things that are still being discussed, but we'll see. Concepts. Concepts is a hot topic that is being discussed for many, many years. It was already merged into C++11 or OX, then it was merged out from it because it was decided to be not ready. For C++14, 17, it didn't made it to the standard, and we had Concepts TS. It was standardized two years ago, and there was no consensus for all this, all this time to merge it to international standard as is. There were some controversies basically about the so-called introducer syntax and terse natural syntax. I will show you how it looks on the next slide. And basically we decided to merge everything beside those features because all of them was, were nearly um, accepted without any, any issues. Also there were some additional changes approved that made it a bit made the concepts a bit easier to use and 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 easier to, to to type and this is basically the paper that was merged into the standard so basically how the concepts look you have some something something template looks like Be instead of just typing here struct or class you provide concept and you provide the name of the concept mm then you can use this concept uh, in a requires clause for your template or you can basically use the, the name ba directly in the type name temp template here declaration instead of type name or class this is the shorthand notation the things that were not accepted was those mentioned already terse national natural notation where you provide the concept name as a let's say type argument of the of the of the argument, the, the type of it. Basically, the controversies here were because people want to know if they are working with template or with regular function. With that, it's easy to be misled uh, which you are <laughs> dealing with. Also, introducer syntax were, was a bit controversial. It looks like that those features were not merged into the standard. And basically, what are the concepts? Mm -hmm. Let's imagine some simple function template that just takes any type and compares it to some other. It may be some global value or some singleton or whatever, but of the same, of the same type, let's say. And you can pass to it a string ABC. It will be okay because you can compare strings and you can pass a mutex to it, for example. And you will get, of course, compile time error because mutex is not, it's not comparable. <laughs> And this is what you get by with the compiler today, yes? You have the information that there is no match for operators equals equals for the mutex, but it's followed by all of the, uh, mm, let's say, tr tryouts of the compiler to, to find a proper um, definition of the, of the template for it. It's not easy to read, you know, you know all of the stuff today was, was mentioned that the compiler error message can uh, even overflow your hard drive when you are doing hardcore template meta programming. So, so concepts are here to help with that. Basically, you can define a concept that will be called, for example, equality comparable. This is a simpli simplified definition of it. This is not exactly how it will be defined in the standard. You can say that it requires that given having A and B of type T, and operation A equals equals B should be a viable, should, 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 should compile fine. And the type returned by this operation should be of Boolean concept. With such a concept, you can define our function template with the requires clause saying you want to type name type T to be equality comparable and write the same code. And now you get a nice error message saying that cannot call the function void uh, f of t ref ref because um, mtx is, is not equality comparable because constraints are not satisfied, because uh, this expression would be ill-formed. So basically this is how the compiler will handle those things and it is the end of the error log, yes? Which is much different than the previous case. Uh, we started also the work on uh, introducing concepts into the um, standard library. Uh, this is the work in progress. It was accepted already by LEWG. These are the core language concepts that will be 
probably merged into this standard in Rappersville. We have also concepts for comparison and concepts for objects like movable, copyable, regular, and so on. And the last concepts that are being proposed for now are callable. So is it invocable function or, or functor? And, and, and a few more. This is basically the list of the concepts that are mm, already accepted by LEWG, but still this paper is not merged to the standard draft. OK, moving forward, this is how you right now handle dates in C++ and C, because we don't have direct support in this for this in C++. If you want to find out what day of the week is July 4th, 2001, you have to write something like this. You have to use this struct tm uh, from C. You have to do some strange calculations in order to, to pass all to fill in all the information. You also have to to have to fill information about the daylight saving time or minus one if you want to have it automatically determined. And in order to print it, you have to provide some simple print array with strings. With C++ 20, we'll have extensions to chrono that will basically allow you to type something like this, that you will say that you want to, to get weekday of July 4th, 2001. With that, everything prints fine and you get the result on the console. This is the library done by, by Howard Hinnant. It's available on the GitHub. And basically, I am using this in production for two years already. So you can start doing this and using this right now. There were a right nice presentation on about those libraries on CppCon. I will provide you the links in a few slides. Basically, goals of this library is to um, integrate seamlessly with the existing libraries, type safety, um, detection of all the errors or most of the errors on during the compile time. Of course, performance. All of this is context and, and, and that stuff. Easy of use. Um, as, you, as you saw, the code is readable. And maybe I'll show you some more examples on this. So basically, you, you may type things like uh, you have a structure year, month, day, and you can fill it with information like this. So two year 2016, you can see that here is the, is the lateral, uh, and month and a day. You can use this syntax, but you can also say you want to fifth Sunday of May of 2016, and it will also work. If there is no fifth Sunday of May, it's up to you how you want to handle the error. Yes? Is this already voted in the standard? Yes, this is already merged into the standard draft. Was there any like, resistance to it because it's like the PSM? Or? Um, Frankly, I, I know that there were some controversies regarding this syntax, but it's so convenient to use and so human readable that, that, that it was decided to, to go with that, I think. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, are you using some of the namespace here for May or something? Or uh, yes, uh, on, on the, on, so as, as I've written here, it's in namespace stood chrono. Okay, so so Here? Yeah, in the example, you said mm -hmm. July slash 4 slash 2001. Mm -hmm. So how does it know that it's, uh, uh, it's not just it's not a, the regular integer that it's actually literal? Like on the other side, the next one, you only actually have like a, lit, uh, a, a named literal structure. So you have the suffix there. Uh, like mm -hmm. July, okay. I might have checked it. Maybe. Maybe it's just because in the, this format the year has to be at the end because otherwise it will be no, no, no any possible yeah. solution in, in the world to, to type this otherwise. Or maybe I have a wrong, wrong um, um, I don't know, maybe some back on the slide, maybe this should be Y here. But anyway, this, this is also fine, yes? Okay. I, I think that, that the, the, this format was fine because here you can, depending on this place where you are and you may have year at the beginning or the, at the end, but the other syntax was was the only possible choice, in fact, to, to type it. Also, mm, those are contexts, as you can see. So you can also check for this in the compile time. 
So basically you can go back and forth from the date to the time point and from the time point to date with such simple calculations and do it in compile time. There's also a feature for time zones, but time zones are runtime features, so they are not consexp. You have to, you, you, this, will, this is done by, the big, by importing and parsing big uh, IANA database of time zones. Basically, this database is updated. It can be uh, switched in during the lifetime of the application. So basically, it cannot be compile time. It has to be runtime. So you can easily s say that you want to, to have this time um, provided in the time zone of, of, of Tokyo, for example. And it will work fine. Uh, as I said, uh, these are the extensions to Chrono. Uh, civil calendar is, is, is supported. IANA database is the source of the information about the time zones. Uh, also, there were added some, some clocks that support the IANA time database. If you would like to start using it, as I said, I'm using this in production in two, for two years right now. You can go for the documentation, video, or the implementation by Howard Hinnant. All of this is top notch to top class of, uh, mm, for documentation, video, and implementation, of course, too. So, so I think you can start using it right now. You don't have to wait for C20. It's a great, really, feature. And Howard did a really good job here. The next feature is span. Span is mm, it's an abstraction. It's, it's like a view on a contiguous uh, sequence of elements. It's like string views, but for data. It's view, not a container, yes? So it doesn't allocate things. It doesn't own things. It's a reference-like type. Right now, it's specified in that way that um, it's span, you provide the element type, and there is some specific uh, parameter called extent that by default provides information minus one, which means that the, the size of it is runtime determined. It may not be the final specification of this in the C20 because there are more papers that would like to, to change it, but they are not decided, not, uh, not ap approved right now. So maybe this will be the final version, or it will be changed how this extent is provided to this pan. Basically, what it means that if you want to have dynamic size provided at runtime, you just you end up with this uh, default parameter. So you provide here span, some pointer, some length mm, during the construction, but the type is just int here, yes, and you you use dynamic extent for allocated here dynamically array. If you want to have something that is static sized, then you provide the size as an argument of the template, and that you don't, you don't have to provide the size in the constructor. There are, of course, some um, error checking being implemented here. So if you have different size of the array, then you claim the span is, you have an error during compilation, and so on. You are able to assign spans to spans, fixed size to, to another fixed size of the, of the equal length. Dynamic size uh, can be assigned from fixed size, of course. And also fixed size can be assigned to dynamic size, but it's up to the user to make sure that the fixed size is okay. Otherwise, it is undefined behavior if the size doesn't match. There are no checks no exceptions being thrown if the size is wrong because it will affect the performance of the, <coughs> of the feature. Additional checks, yes. Uh, I will briefly provide you the interface of the class. So there are a lot of constructors, as you can see. You can construct it from the pointer and the, and the length, from the uh, two iterators. You can provide it from, from the array, static uh, bounded array, uh, from uh, STD array from any container and from other spans. You can uh, access each element by the, uh, by the operators, brackets and, 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 and this call operator. Also, you can get the data with data, like all other containers do. You have, of course, begin and end for, for iteration. 
And there are two special functions called s byte and s byte uh, writable bytes that basically convert your span to span of const byte and to span of byte. So basically, you end up with a buffer that you can basically treat as a storage of, of bytes. And there are, of course, functions for comparisons of those classes. Uh, I think these are the, the last things about the interface of span. You can uh, create subspans with first and last. It's similar to what we have in string view. And you can create a subspan too with the offset and the count. And you have also compile time versions of those. Span is cheap to construct, to copy, to move and use. Uh, it's encouraged to be used as a pass by value. And basically, it's, all, it's really, really fast type because it has trivial destructor, can will be passed in registers by the compilers, but it's not that important right now. Okay, so next big feature is consistent comparison. This is one of the biggest features, I think, that will affect all of us. And probably we'll see, I don't know if in C++20 will, will support this in the library, or it will be done in C++23, but for sure mm, it will make a lot of things easier. In C++17, if you want to create a class, let's say P with two members, and if you want to do anything with, with that just to, to compare this class, you have to provide the set of all these operations. Operator equals, less, not equal, and all others. It's typical that it's first cumbersome and uh, you it's, it's a lot of typing that, that the monkey can, can do. And also human tends to make errors here. For example, it turns out that copy-paste error happened here. The, you have this implementation for less and greater, for example, because someone didn't change the design and so on. <coughs> With C++20, you will type only things like this. And you can provide even information that it should be generated by the compiler with equal equals default. And the compiler will generate basically mm, body of this function and this function will will support all of this all of these operations. <coughs> basically what, what this operator returns? Uh, it returns an object that um, can be compared less than zero, bigger than zero, and, and equals zero. It's similar to things that we know from, from string compare, mem compare, and so on. Yes? Is that the actual implementation of less than? Mm. Which one is less. the question? Yeah. Uh, so here? Say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's assuming that these are you know, sequential numbers, like a, a, an integer <coughs> decimal part. But let's say I wanted all of them to be default except for that one. Because that one strikes me. I'm not sure if I'm following you. Mm, if you will type this one, you will not type those at all. Right. Yeah. I think you hmm? can you choose to type one of them if you want to. If you want to change the behavior of just one of them. Mm, no, you either type this or this, I think. And okay. if yeah. Because you, you either want to have equality or, or, or less than comparison. Mm, basically, you, you don't have to generate all of this. I will show you this on the, on the next slide. Because you can decide if you want only the equality comparison or less than comparison. Or, or all of them. And but but basically, it you will not be able to generate only this, for example. Yes. At least I think so. Um, by default, if you do the default def default implementation here, it will compare the elements in in the uh, definition order. Mm. And it's commonly known as spaceship operator, as you probably know from other languages. Yes. Question. Uh -huh. Uh, I will show this on the next slide, what, what you do if you're not using default, yes? Uh, basically, it gets even more complicated with the types like our, let's say, case insensitive strings, uh, where you would like to have it compare against each other. And with, for example, C-style strings, 
or you can add also string views to this and std strings and other stuff you will end up with like with three screens of, of comparison functions mm, it's important here that you can find that, that those are provided twice for the C style string on the left and the right, you have to type it twice and all of this has to be consistent. It's sometimes not easy to type correctly and there are errors in that. Uh, regarding the previous slide about mm -hmm. uh, either one or the other, it seems that uh, it will do overload resolution and if there's an ambiguity between uh, the spaceship operator and one of the specific comparators, it will choose the specific comparator. So you can write a specific uh, overload for a particular comparison operator while using Mm. Uh, yes? And does the spaceship operator always have to define uh, the complete order or can I also define partial order? Uh, next slide. Oh, okay. I will go to the next slide and all the questions will be answered from the next slide, okay? <laughs> Maybe not all, but all that, that were asked right now. Uh, I will just only show you the, the, the implementation of this one with C20. Basically, you provide only two functions. You provide the function to compare with CI strings and with with constar star, and basically it covers both of the cases when it is provided on the left or right side of the comparison. And you provide some function to, to, to do it for you. And you're basically asking for this. So, uh, uh, if you want to type your own mm, types that are not, not, not default and not auto, because you can see that I used auto here, uh, for the um, and the compiler will determine what, what is what is the, the specific type of comparison based on the members. You can provide it by your own. You can provide types like strong ordering, strong equality, weak ordering, weak equality, depending of if you want a less operation to be supported or not. And also, if there is a st strong or weak uh, relationship here, meaning that for any a and b that are equals. Uh, any functions with these arguments should also be return, return the same value, yes? This means that it's strong equality or strong ordering here. And if for the same values functions will return something else, you don't have weak equality and ordering. I know that there's also a partial, I think, somewhere there, but I didn't have it put it on the slide. So this is basically how you uh, mm, how you determine how you control what is being generated. <coughs> A funny thing is that it, ends, it, it is in the compare header, but it nearly ended up in the equals header <laughs> um, by the committee. We, we voted on this, this was the second choice that we liked. <coughs> <coughs> it would be really nice to include this, at least as long as we don't have modules. Okay, so this is how you do it if you would like to have something different than the default order provided by the, or different implementation provided by the compiler. So basically you can say that you want the strong ordering, and th this, this type supports strong ordering, and you want basically here to provide things in the reverse order than the compiler will do by itself. So first we compare classes, uh, base classes, and then we compare last name, first name, and tax ID. You can see that it's easy to aggregate those lines one by one. There's no logic, it's really simple to do. And you basically return what is returned here. If you provided the wrong type here, and the members here will not be able to support that, you have a compile time error. If, if, if you made it wrong. Does it answer the questions you had? Great. Okay, so for built-in types, uh, these are the orderings that, that they were decided to go, f to go with. So basically we have for bool integral pointer types, you have strong ordering, for floating we have partial, with enumerations with the same what is the underlying type. For null pointers we have strong orderings. For copyable arrays the same as T. For other arrays, there is no spaceship operator, and for void, there is also no spaceship operator. And those are the, the types that are defined in this in this uh, compare header. So basically, there are also some some functions that will help you write this thing, so you don't have to remember how to type it. There is s equal, is not equal, and so on. 
Uh, there is also, <coughs> also stroke order, weak order, and you have also lexicographical compare functions for that. Yes? Mm. I uh, I'm not sure if there is any paper right now in the process of updating uh, the library types of this space operator. I don't say it's it's not possible to do, or there are any problems. It's just a lot of work to do to, to update all of the types in the library to support that. I think I think we already done some uh, research on this how big amount of work is needed for this, but this paper is still on, on the table. So how does it treat the ones that don't actually have the spaceship operators? Is it assume strong ordering? Or you said that if you declare strong ordering, you get your file finder errors or something. Only the members want strong ordering. Yeah, basically you can compose this, I think, uh, if you, if you um, we basically ask about this. What, what, what about using string if string doesn't support it yet, yes? Right. Uh, <coughs> I think it will not compile as it will not find this special operator in this string right now. But I might be wrong. So would that be a compile time error? I think so. I think it will just say that it cannot determine the, the order ordering at all because string will probably not have the implementation of the special operator yet. Isn't that what you said in your green box? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I mean, in the green box, it means that if, uh, for example, this is only the partial ordering supported by the types here, and you would like to have something stronger that then, then you can provide, you have a compile time error that you have a bug in your implementation that you cannot provide stronger um, here or during that it's possible by the member types. <coughs> you can always provide the weaker, but you cannot provide stronger. Okay, as I said, this would be a killer feature for, for, for many libraries, for many small features, tools to write for things like maybe Unis library or other stuff that, that can be written and where the structures are really small and, and simple, but you have to type all of those comparison functions for that. Okay, so next feature is are the synchronized buffered all streams. <coughs> uh, those are, let's say, something like a wrapper around underlying output string, uh, uh, output stream, and they basically buffer the data passed to them, mm, and they are able to atomically transfer them to the underlying stream. So basically you can type something like this, that you pass the C out to the OSYNC stream, and then you provide the information, and it will of course type, write everything on, the, on this console um, with the end of the expression, or basically with the destruction of this type. Uh, how it works, it will have two classes. One is basic sync booth mm, that have uh, emit um, and set emit on sync special member functions here. Member functions, no, they're not, they're special because they are new, but, but not uh, uh, the typical special functions. Uh, and get wrapped, that basically gives you the wrapped buffer type that you provided during the construction. And you have, of course, two uh, type devs for current WHRT. Emit automatically transfers the contents to the buffer, and sync here, protected function here, a virtual function will record that there was a flash, so basically end or other flash statement in the stream. If there was emit on sync equals true, then it will be called emit. And there's also basic austring that uh, takes the sync buff and pass all of those functions to the sync buffer mm, me member functions. And how it works. <coughs> Let's assume that we have uh, austring stream on C out and we pass hello here without end at the end. There is no flash on this on the stream, and nothing is put to the to the C out here because the destructor of OSYNC stream was not 
mm, basically uh, run, but you can force it with emit. This means that this hello and new line will be put to the cout, but it will not be flashed on the console because there was no flash here. Yes? And then you put more words here, hello world, and pass the flash. And on this emit, it will be copied again to the cout, and there will be a flash on the console because there was handle at the end. And you add more greetings here, there is no flash again. And with the braces and the destructor being run, uh, these greetings will will be passed, moved to the C out, but still not flashed because there was on the new line at the end, yes? <coughs> Another example, you can get wrapped um, stream, so basically the C out from this out one to create another sync stream and type something here and you can see that it doesn't inter interleave with each other on the on the output as i said it, it's pa it's being passed atomically so uh, to the running stream so it should work also in multi threaded environment another paper and that the support for this feature to work with with those streams, but when they are known as basic OSIX stream that we basically handle in our, in our code. Basically, this is that we, we, we get in most of our interfaces. And here we don't have access to the emit members and so on. So there were added special uh, standalone functions that, that will uh, do these operations on this OSIX stream if that stream is a synchronized one. If it's, if it's not, then it will do nothing. Otherwise, it, that they will do what they are supposed to do on this on this type. Any questions to this? Okay, so let's move on. Now we have a few features regarding the atomics. And basically we standardize the uh, shared pointer for for atomics for at atomic operations. Uh, until now we have so called uh, functions so that, 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 uh, that manipulated shared pointers. There were some problems with that. Basically, uh, objects manipulated by those functions were indistinguishable from, from the other typical shared pointers, so you had to remember which one has to be handled with those functions, which can be assigned directly, and so on. And there were many problems with that and bugs in the code because of this. So basically, uh, we merge the feature from the concurrency TS into the international standard that there will be specialization of atomic for short pointer that will just do the work also for weak pointer. And, and it will just work for all the cases. Uh, and with that, the share pointer interface, the standalone is deprecated. Also, there was addition of atomic uh, specialization for floating point, point types. So there, was, there are specializations for float, double, long double in the standard. And it would be for use in many uh, applications like HPC, for example. <coughs> okay, EBO stands for Empty Base Optimization. Um, Probably you know this idiom, it, it, it introduced a lot of, let's say, problems. Uh, first, it has limited applicability if something is final, what we already told, was told today by, mm, on, on one of the, the lectures. If something is final, you cannot inherit from it, then you have to put it as a member, otherwise you, have to, you, you can to inherit from it. So there are some special helper, helper types to do it. And... Mm, the name leakage is another ca case here that mm, if you have any mm, members, member functions, data members inside such uh, classes like, like our, I don't know, deleters, allocators and so on, they will leak to the interface of your class because you inherit from them. Even if you inherit pri privately, it will still be visible by, by the compiler and so on. Mm, and also it's, being, it's really awkward just to have to, to inherit from something just to not pay for the size of it. 
So basically, what was added to the language is the attribute called no unique address that you'll be able to provide to your hasher predicate allocator, default deleter, or anything you will have there. And it will not increment the address in the structure for those, if they are, of course, empty. It should make implementation of many features and many types in the library and in Boost much easier. And it should be easier for us to, to, to write such, such types. Mm -hmm. If it will be, if um, it will work, if the EBO would work for this, or maybe I would say, um, okay, I will repeat the question. Sure. Uh, so it doesn't mean is that does it have to work, or it might just work in some cases. It will work when it's possible to work. So when this class is empty, because you can provide non-empty class, of course, then there will have an address will be incremented. Yes, but but if it's empty, it will it will force the compiler to to do what it's being told to do. Of course, if compiler will support this feature, because it will take some time probably for C20 to be implemented. Mm, another feature that was asked by the uh, mm, performance, let's say, scoped community uh, was uh, add likely and uh, unlikely attributes to the language. They were supported for many years by the compilers with different pragmas and different syntaxes. And basically, right now we'll have them in the in the standard. And what they do is basically they help the compiler to to determine which case is the um, more probable case mm, for the optimization, because you sometimes may know better than the compiler, but of course we sometimes know don't know better, and the compiler and branch prediction predictors do a really good job here for most cases right now. It's for some corner cases, for some uh, highly optimized code that you are sure that, that your optimization will help not break stuff. So basically, we're able, able to write likely and unlikely attributes on such statements. It can be provided at most once. Uh, likely and unlikely, of course, cannot appear in the same statement. And this is basically how we type that, type, type that in an if statement. So basically, if, you will, if the compiler will see something like this, it will optimize like uh, this bus was about to be called. So basically, the full will return true. Also, if it's nested in another if, it will assume that both of this will return true for you. In a switch case, you can also provide the case that is likely to be, to be found. So the compiler can optimize those binary trees or other magic it has for, for this case. And also you can provide things like unlikely in a while loop, for example, saying that probably this loop will never be triggered. These are the cases where you can use it. But please note that this is a really dangerous feature. I know that people like to play with new stuff and to abuse things. Uh, I would say it's first test, measure, and verify that, that this really is needed there and, and then put it there, not just tag every if statement in your code with likely unlikely. Yes, question? I see that in the if statement, the likely is placed after the closing mm -hmm. parenthesis, but in this case, mm -hmm. in not after the closing parenthesis. Is there a syntax to place that after the closing parenthesis in between one? Uh, the question is uh, where we put likely, after the braces or before? I. There was a lot of discussion on this. I, I was not involved in all of this, so I think that this is how it has to be put right now and, and state right now. You cannot just put the likely before, I think, no, if I statement think here or, 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 after, or after, after the function call here. While statement, mm -hmm. can this uh, uh, while here, yeah. mm -hmm. be placed after the closing parenthesis before opening curly brace, like with the if statement? Ah, you mean here? Mm -hmm. I think you can. Yeah, I think you can. Mm -hmm. I basically ask if you can put unlikely here. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So if, if if can be written without without parentheses, you mean without braces? Yeah, I mean I, I know, but here 
it's inside of the braces, and right. there it's outside of the braces. So there's no central pulse. Somewhat inconsistent. I, I'm guessing either one works, just because of the way the syntax. Yeah, so just to summarize, I, I think that you can pop pass unlikely here bef before the before the, the brace uh, or after the brace here and before the function here too. Uh, it's I think that both of these cases are, are mm, possible here. But as I said, I'm not, I'm, I can check it. it th this is the number of the paper. I can read it and, and find out if wha what are the exact syntax there in the wording. I, I don't know all the features by heart yet. And of course, I didn't have possibility to experiment with them in my code. Okay, another feature from Howard Hinnant. It is the small one and really, really needed one. So basically, we'll right now finally n have the information what the is the endianness of our, of our platform. This is basically a simple enum that provides you information about little big ordering and native ordering of the platform. You use it basically like this. So if, if your uh, native ordering is big, then you handle this in big, big style. Mm. Otherwise, you use little, or you, m you may probably have also mixed, as it was stated in the paper. Another feature that was introduced is something C-like. It's not exactly the initialization from, from C but you'll be able to designate uh, specific members of these structures you, are, you want to, you, you want to uh, initialize. You may initialize X and Z here with, value with, with some specific data, specific state, and in this case, the Y will be default constructed, so it will be initialized to zero. This will be zero initialized for the trivial type. And this will trigger an error because this is in the wrong order. So you have to put everything in the right order of the declaration. Also, you can provide things like this, so you can override the defaults provided in the, in the structure. Other uh, members will be, will be initialized, of course, with the defaults as you wanted. This feature also works for unions. Basically, if you mm, default construct or initialize the union, you always initialize the first argument of it, or first variant of it. So basically, it was um, initializing this, the first statement here initializes the, mm, the A member of the union. Um, you cannot initialize, of course, both of them. And you cannot initialize the second one with providing the, the value that is supported by the second one because the compiler will, will complain about this. But with this new feature, you are able to say that you want to initialize B with this, and it will work fine right now. Of course, you cannot initialize both with this feature. <coughs> yes, question? What, how will designated initial initialization behave if there's a non-default constructor? Uh, um, the question is how this feature um, behaves when there is no default constructor. Uh, so it just happens in the initializer list, I guess, <coughs> before the init? You, you mean in this case? Like for, for what would happen if if y was was don't don't have the default constructor? Yeah, like I guess can I call with this designated initializer list and put parentheses with parameters and pass in the constructor? Mm, I'm not sure if I'm following you here. Um, Think of the string example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been constructors, but uh, yeah, w so you ask if you can provide the uh, many arguments to the construction? It, it, let's say there's an explicit constructor with a parameter. Mm -hmm. Can I do both? Uh, what do you mean by both? You mean to, to have one here and another one here? It will be overridden, yes? Uh, I mean, like, if, if I put parentheses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Closing brace. Let's say I put parentheses on, on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Here, yeah. And mm -hmm. then I say, because I want to pass a parameter into a constructor for A, 
a non-default constructor that's defined in A. Uh, I guess that would be similar to aggregate initialization to be normalized in the Yeah, ah, you, you ask basically what happens if, if struct A is, is non a POD type, let's say, yes? Then you are just playing with the constructors. It will not work. It just works for the aggregates. Here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cannot just say you want to provide like first and third parameter of the constructor and second just omit. Or you cannot initialize members if you have construction for them. Mm -hmm. It's just for, for simple types. Also, the, uh, another proposal are the initialization of the, of the bit fields. So you'll be able to, um, to provide the, the default value for, for bit fields in, in structures. Because right now it was not possible. Okay, as we have in C17, we have um, if with initializer. Right now we'll also have and um, we'll have also the initializer for um, for range based for loop. Basically, um, why do we need it? In this case, let's assume that, that it's um, the function f returns something by value. Yes, it's not a reference, it's by value. You, have to you will have here the some, some object and then you uh, think and then you iterate on the, on the items of, of things. And everything works fine in this case. But if you will, let's say, optimize the code and put everything here, then your first iteration will work on the temporary, that's fine. And after this, the, the second, the first iteration, when you pass to the second one, the temporary will be gone, and you'll be working on something undefined, and expired basically. So these are the possible problems here, and it was solved with basically providing the possibility to store uh, the temporary inside the for, for loop. And right now we don't have to provide any artificial braces to, to narrow the scope of of, of this variable. Yes, Robin? In the C17 case, what f returns by value is copied to thing. Mm -hmm. In the C20 case, is that avoided somehow? Mm. That copy? And the question is if this copy is uh, if this copy here is avoided in C20. No, it's not avoided. It's it's copied here to this thing inside the, the for loop. So basically the variable exists the same like, like it was before, but right now it's in the for loop scope that the compiler generates not outside of it. Yes, Jason? Uh, if that value is being, if the, the result of f is a value, which is the case where this mm -hmm. is necessary, then mm -hmm. there's no copy going to be made anyhow in uh, 17 or Yeah. It's just going to be constructed in place. Of R RVO, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all will do what you want it to do. Um, it depends how, how the f returns this, of course, because it, it can be an RVO and there may be a copy, yes? <laughs> In some cases. There may be a yeah. Yes, but that would happen regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like yeah. I'm not claiming that this saves us from doing a copy or not. I just I just think that this that this save us from lifetime issues. Yes. Yeah. No. No. I'm mm -hmm. agreeing with you. I'm just trying to clarify the, mm -hmm. the issue. Sure. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I've seen such a pattern. Uh, because we are using clay based for loops, we miss this, this index stuff often. So we, we do this this way, and we have to also pass some ad artificial scope here just to make this i index not pass outside of the scope. With this, we can add the index as here as a local variable for the range based for loop, and it will just work fine. These are some use cases for this feature. Yes, question? So the question is why we are not incrementing here, yes? Yeah. Um, basically, because range base 4 is safer to use. Uh, you are working on data, not on the, not on the iterators. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my wife, mm -hmm. why couldn't they have like, like a traditional semicolon where I could... <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, so we would like to have additional semicolon here to increment yeah, stuff. Maybe. <coughs> you, you can write the paper <laughs> for this. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, this is only one of the use cases, yes, for, for this. And yeah, you may, you may continue the break or continue the, the loop before going to the increment operations and then you have some problems with the for loop. But basically, range-based for is mostly done for, for simple stuff, I think. You Not may just call that a go-to in a label, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's continue, because we are tight on, tight on time right now. Um, string uh, was extended with even more member functions. Uh, right now we have more than 100, ma many more probably than 100 already there. We have starts with and ends with, with those three types. This is for string and string view. Also, a new type that was introduced called remove cvref that is pretty similar to the to the DK. Like DK, it removes uh, CV qualifiers and reference qualifiers from the type, but it will not mimic any array to pointer or function to pointer conversions. Mm, basically, for of our laziness, we use in many places DK, what it was doing more than, than needed, because we missed that one and we didn't want to do all the these steps by ourselves. One of the cases was specification of the optional, for example, where there is right now a decay and it was switched with another paper uh, and um, some other places in the standard library to use this remove CVREF instead of decay. Because it's cleaner, because this is exactly what should be here from the very beginning, but it was easier to type decay than, than compile like three or four different type, type trace to do only the first ballot here. Also, no Discord attribute was uh, added to the library. Right now, it was added for only to those functions. So async, allocate, operator new, launder, and empty. But it's possible that after some time, more functions will be, will be marked with no discard. One of the last features that were added, the small ones, uh, are the, is the utility to convert to from the um, to, to a pointer? We had address of, but address of doesn't work nice with things that are not uh, initialized yet, like given from allocate, because you have to dereference it. It's the type of it is, is pretty unknown and so on. So there is a new helper called to address. It works on a pointer type, not on the value type like you see here. And basically, it can be implemented this way, that if you have a like pointer type that is just written P, if it's not a pointer type, then you basically um, pass to this function the result of operator arrow. And, and you will have the pointer type of it. We are preparing to have con containers uh, being able to run in a const exp context. Thanks to, 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 to the talks and the work that, that Jason did here. Uh, so basically, uh, we, mm, this, this is one of the first um, papers that were merged in just to add the uh, iterator requirements for the context iterators. Uh, there are other ongoing and probably will have context vector, uh, uh, I mean vector working in context context in, in C++20 if everything goes fine. The last of the small features that were added is regarding the preprocessor. You can provide va, va opt here with, with comma and this command then will be optional. It will be either not added at all or it will be uh, allowed us to, to, to have do things like this. Okay, so these are things that were added. I will talk right now about the changes that were done to the, to the library and to the, to the language. I will start with the feature that is still work in progress, but I mentioned about it because this is the paper proposed to the committee by my company. <laughs> so, so I start with that. Uh, it adds the heterogeneous lookup for on, on, on unordered containers. Basically, it will work like, like this, that right now in C++17, if you type, if you have an unordered map of string and int, if you will pass things like abc um, constraint star, and or string view, 
basically we always have to cons construct the string in order to find something, to, to, to hash this type, to this value. If the string is long, you will have then the additional allocation of the memory and so on. And there are also some, some other issues described in the paper, what, what they are fixing. With C++20, mm, it was decided that it will be working like this, that in the um, hasher that you are pr providing by yourself, you will have to provide special type called transparent key equal, which will be the type that you basically normally provide here as a four parameter to the unordered map. So you provide the compatible uh, comparator to the hasher that can deal with this, with this hasher. And you provide all the operators for all the types you want to support for string view, string, construct star, and basically they should provide the same, and the same hash value, so that's why I use the same uh, hasher for string view here. But basically if you are sure that your implementation provi provides you the same, um, the same hash for string view, string, and construct star types, you don't have to go through string view, you can just di directly use the hash value from that. And because you have you providing the uh, equal uh, the comparator here in the hasher, you don't you don't have to provide it in the unordered map specification because it will be taken from 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 here. If you will provide here <coughs> something different than the default value in the in the map or the type here, you will have a compatible error saying that you are doing something wrong that you provided one uh, comparator here and another one here. Also, if the comparator provided here will not, it's not a transparent one, <coughs> you will also have a compatible error. Because in order for, to do for the feature to work, uh, you have to have transparent a comparator and hasher supporting all of those types. Another change for another containers uh, was that right now you could compare um, another containers only if the hasher and predicate were the same. Uh, predicate, okay, it sh mm, um, um, yeah, predicate is, is okay because it's, it's, it's a different hash if you have different predicate, but basically mm, it's independent from, from, from the hasher if you want to compare the values, if the value is the same. So it was the, the hash part of it was removed and, and you will be ab basically able to compare two unordered, unordered maps having different, hash, having different hashers but the same, the, 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 the same um, comparator functions. Yeah, you know how the Lambda looks right now. It basically supports nearly all of the, of the braces we have on our keyboard, yes, to type. <laughs> uh, but we are missing one of those, so, so we added them. Right now you'll be able to provide also, also those, those braces in Lambda. <laughs> so we are right now have a full set of, of those in our specification for Lambda. Basically, you are, you are providing this for generic lambdas, and you basically uh, provide exactly the types you would like to have for this. What does it fix? For example, let's assume that you have a lambda that takes a vector here, and you want to make sure that this is, this is a vector. So, for example, you, you do the vector value type here, and <coughs> you want to make sure that it was a vector to, to provide nice compile time uh, assertion. So you had to type something like your own time trade, saying it's a, it's, it's a vector or not, depending on of the, of, of the things here, this is a typical type trade, and provide static assertion here, just to make sure that your, that your lambda works, works with, with a vector of any, any type. Uh, with this feature, you're able just to type this, this way, saying you just want this lambda to work with vectors of any type, and it will work fine. It's easier, easier to specify than, than doing this stuff. And we have all the braces in Lambda. And can you combine that with the concepts? Can we combine, combine Lambdas with concepts? Uh, I don't think so yet. I don't think that, that, that concepts will work with, with, with Lambdas right now. Another feature is to allow uh, capturing equals this in Lambda, because right now we, we support this and this directly. This, these are different stuff, yes? This basically takes this by pointer, this copies the object. And if you have a lot of those in the code, you may assume that this is the same. 
and it may be m m misled by, by, by many. And that's why and right now it, it will be allowed to type something like this, equals this. Mm, this is basically the same as that one. This is basically the same as this one. But you are being explicit uh, in cases when you are using this feature just to, to make sure that, that you don't uh, have do uh, some mistake or bug here with specifying that or that form. It's easy to, to, to forget what's being done there under the hood. Okay, mm, another feature for lambdas and the change for them was that uh, stateless lambdas will be default constructable and assignable. This, this change comes, uh, if I think, from the Luidion in order to be able to, um, to pass a lambda specified like this, for example, in some header mm, to the specification of the container, for example, as a template parameter. And you don't have to care if the greater is a lambda or a functor. You, you just work with that, yes? The same. You always want, mm, could do it for, for the functor, or you never w could do it for, for, the, for the lambda until now. Also, you'll be able to, to, um, to create another map the same way and assign them. Right now, you, you had some errors that lambda is not assignable. And right now, it will be, be possible to assign stateless lambdas to, it, to each other. And the question is, does it work with stateful lambdas? No, it doesn't. At least this is what the paper says. Yes, that's for, for stateless lambdas. I don't think that, that stateful right now is supported. Uh, maybe somewhere in the future. And the feature for lambda is to allow pack expansion in the init capture. Um, I never tried to do this until now, but it turned out that uh, template parameter packs can be captured in Lambda either by copy, by reference, or by tapu if you want to move something. Basically, if you want to do it by copy, it's easy. You provide some function saying delay invoke foo, and you create a Lambda that has um, argument pack here in the capture clause. It's copied into the, the state of the Lambda, <coughs> and then you just type and execute the foo with those arguments stored in the lambda, yes? It's by copy. If you want to pass it by, with, by move right now, you have to use tuple for that. And that's not that easy to type and to figure out how to do it. So basically you have to create a local variable in the lambda, saying that you want to initialize it with make tuple of move all the arguments, then you have to handle the, the return value on apply this for foo and so on. It's not friendly to the user, so right now you'll be able to, to type only, only this. And then you can run any foo with, this, with those arguments. And they are moved to the state of the lambda. OK. Mm. And that's all for the lambdas. And now we will go for the changes regarding the const expressions. And we added const expressions to the library for, for complex. So basically, you'll be able to, to do the calculations, no, not only create types, because you always could create a, a type, but you couldn't do operations on, on this one until now. Also, the same goes for, uh, mm, for some algorithms. If you will provide the context type to the, to the algorithm, you'll be able to, to, to do the context um, operations in the algorithm for those. This is added for all the algorithms um, that do not use STD swap, that do not allocate memory, because there are three that do allocate memory, and do not rely upon uniform, uniform in distribution. All other algorithms will have context right now and we'll be able to, to, to work with context containers. A 
Another change to the, um, let's say, algorithms is um, algorithms like accumulate. Basically, we're doing mm, we're doing the copy of the of the result here mm, instead of move. So even if you try to pre-allocate um, the string that's being accumulated here, it will be fine only for the for the first iteration of the algorithm, and the rest of those will, will, will not use your pre-allocated stuff. It will just create a new string uh, with the data, and then you'll have a lot of allocations mm, in, the in the meantime. Mm, what was added basically for accumulate and partial sum, right now the, the accumulator is moved, not copied, to the, to the result. And for inner product, similarly, and for adjacent difference, too. Earlier it was just increasing the string all the time and even if you did some reserve at the beginning it was useless, it was just used for the first iteration. Now it worked fine. Did you know that string reserve could shrink your container? It's specified by the standard right now. So basically, if your size of the container is bigger than your request in reserve, the implementation is allowed to, to shrink it. It doesn't have to, it's allowed to do it. Some, some, some implementations do, so some of them doesn't. Uh, so basically, it's, it's a problem with portability. Also, some of people found that, found, found that during the profiling that they were resizing mm, strings and then reserving and reserving were basically doing opposite things that they would just did with resize. Uh, in specific loops it's possible to do. <coughs> uh, it complicates generic code because a string vector doesn't shrink on reserve, but, but basic string does. So if you're doing generic stuff you have to determine which type you work with and, and behave accordingly to it. Uh, basically, it duplicates the functionality of the function we have already and it's inconsistent with, with vector, as I said. So basically, from now on, uh, basic string will not be allowed to, to shrink. It will be the same as for vector. If you want to shrink, just use shrink to fit. If you depended on this in your implementations, just use shrink to fit. How is vector compatible? It's not, but... <coughs> but I don't think that someone really uh, depended on this. Uh, I think that most of the of the users were not uh, uh, were impacted in a, in a wrong way by the by the in, in with the performance of this, not knowing about the about the problem. So this basically is not backward compatible, but in a good faith that it will that it will fix stuff rather than, than, than break someone's code. Basically, until now, you, all, you, you couldn't depend that you will have uh, the buffer shrinked because it was optional for the implementation to do. And, and the different implementations were doing this differently, so, so you either way didn't have the guarantee that it's shrinked. To shrink, you always had to use this function. Okay, another change is uh, is thing that were was discussed lately uh, regarding the standard library promises that, that that we would like to provide to our users. Basically, if Template function, function template specializations are not easy to, to reason about. For example, in such code, or maybe in such instantiation, um, it's not easy to reason about which of these function templates and specializations will be, will be run. Do you know which one will be, will be run here? First, second, or, or third one? Second one? the most specialized one. The problem is that uh, in the first step of overall resolution only the function template uh, stuff is being mm, 
is being compared. So you don't have this one in the first step of overall uh, resolution. You see only those two. And with those two, the, the, the first one is better. And uh, with that, this first one, first one is selected. This one is selected only if the first one was selected in the first phase. So basically, in the overall res resolution, if the function template is will be this one will be selected, then in the second phase, you are looking into all of the specializations to find the best specialization for this specific function template. But this is in the second phase. And, and basically, in this case, the second phase was never triggered. And as you can see, this is, this is confusing for, for the users to do. It's better to overload on, on functions than, than to specialize them, function templates, I mean. And that's why it was explicitly disallowed in the standard to do it. Basically, right now, standard will say that you are allowed to specialize class templates, but for user types only. So at least one of the arguments has to be user type, because you shouldn't specialize for the standard types only. And you shouldn't specialize function templates uh, for STD, and probably also for any other library you use. I think it's also true for this library from Google, yes, that, that they released lately. Yes, question? How does this play into the old uh, method of uh, implementing copy swap idioms, where, we would, where sometimes you would have specialized a SID swap for your user defined types? Uh, the question is uh, how this um, compares to the to this copy and swap idiom at swap, where you are specializing swap. You should overload on this. On swap, not on, not specialized in namespace in standard namespace. Then everything works works fine. Excuse me. Yeah, I mean that it's you will. Standard basically say that you shouldn't do it, and you shouldn't do it, yes? I don't know if compilers will provide you compile time error if this in this two namespace. I don't think so. I'm not sure about this. But basically, standard explicitly say that if you will be doing this, you are asking for, 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 for problems, yes? And we will not help you with that. <laughs> because you did something that we, are, we said you shouldn't do. And it seems that it starts to, to similar things start to be, be true for other uh, libraries too. Another change here is down with type name. Basically, mm, you know that in where you have dependent name in a, in a, in a template, you had to provide type name disambiguator in order to, to provide the information to compile that is a type. So for example, in such cases, when you were providing like allocator traits pointer, you had to say that Mm, that this pointer is a type inside the specialization of allocator traits for your allocator type that the compiler doesn't, doesn't necessarily know here. And you've provided the, help, the helper type name here. And compilers basically, Visual Studio was never and yeah, uh, forcing you to, do, to write this. And this was a portability trap of the code for, to, for moving to GCC. But GCC always demanded this, and if you forget to write this, it was saying you, didn't you mean type name here? <laughs> because it already knew there should be a type. And uh, what's even more strange is that for such cases like here, you don't have to pass type name right now. Uh, the compiler will just work fine and will not complain about it. So basically what was standardized with this paper is that if compiler can reason about that it, this has to be a type, and can figure out by itself that it has to be a type name there because it already does, as you've seen in, in many probably warnings in your code. Mm, the type name will be optional. You can pass it there, but you don't have to. So for example, code right now that has to be written like this in C++17, in C++20 will look like this. The question is, what will happen if the pointer here is not a type but a member? It would be the same for both cases. It would be a compile time error, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? <laughs> yeah, the comment was, we were, we were, we were waiting so long for, for this feature. Yeah, 
it helps a lot in writing stuff and it basically closes a bit a gap of this terse syntax for concepts where you have to know if you're working with template or not because the code for both will start to look more, more similar right now because those type name disambiguators will disappear. So you sometimes you don't have to know exactly if you're working with template or, or with regular function. But still, some, in some cases, uh, probably you will have to write those type names and also still there is a template disambiguator that is not treated by this paper, yes? Uh, Make sure it was extended to support arrays because it didn't support it. Unique only make unique was supporting array types until now. Mm, and right now we'll be able to specialize on, on private mm, classes. Right now it was not possible to specialize on impl because impl is in the, in the private scope of X. So it was not seen outside of it. Right now, you will, you will be able to, to specialize your trait on the internal class of X. Pod and is pod is deprecated. We removed all the pod uh, words, letters from the, from the standard document. Uh, I know that we'll be missing pod because we like to, 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 to say pod in many cases, but it turns out that uh, we mean different things with pod in, in, when, when we talk about it. For example, people often say that pod is something that you can mem copy easily. But it's not always true. Mm -hmm. Basically, the, 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 the right answer is trivially copy constructable and trivially copy assignable. Also, people say that pod is something that C compiler will, uh, will understand. Mm, this is pod. C, comp C compiler will, will not understand this. So basically, we think about pod, but we exactly are not referring to the, to the mm, definition that the standard library was, was using. Uh, so basically, because of this, pod is no longer a part of the standard document. Uh, we removed the type traits, removed all the instances where it was referred, and replaced with specific uh, properties of, of this type where needed. A small change, but may, it may affect you in the code, so I'm providing it here, is that memory order for, for atomics were, was made as enum um, enumerators rather than, than, than type, rather than, uh, uh, yeah, type this here. Mm -hmm. This is a scoped enumerator right now. But in, if in order to, to support the, the, the previous stuff, we have those, those things, so, so, so it should, should be backward compatible for most of the cases. And one of the late last features uh, is adding the version mm, header. Basically, we have a version called CISO 646 that was basically def defined in the standard as an empty header, but we couldn't deprecate it and remove it because it turned out that it was the smallest header in the, in the standard, so it was used by all the implementations to store some additional stuff in it <laughs> that is not sta sta spe specified by the standard, it's implementation specific implementation there. Basically, what was stored there was the, for example, version of the library or, or the language you use. <coughs> so basically, we are not now able to remove this header and all the version information will be provided in the version header. So you have the information about the version of the library, of the language, you can have versions of, of different things. Uh, for example, also uh, probably featured as macros will, land, will end up there. So the macros that specify if specific features are supported by the compiler or not. And that is the last feature I wanted to mention and that was merged in the standard. There were a lot, a lot of bug fixes for, for the current standard or uh, smaller additions, mm, but most of them were covered today. Uh, maybe what will happen next mm, regarding this C++20 We'll have a meeting in a month in Rappersville, in Switzerland, then in San Diego and Kona, and we expect that in Kona, 
C++ 20 will be designed and, and feature complete. Until then, we will still br bring new papers for the discussion. But you can see here that in San Diego will be the last meeting for new proposals to enter evolution groups. And then we will pass things to, um, to wording groups in Kona. And from now on, uh, the international ballo will start for, for, for the official document and evolution groups will start soon after work on C++ 23 features. And we expect to release to, to, to release the, the, the version in 2020 and from the second meeting, probably somewhere in, in vacations period in Bulgaria, we will, we will start working on 23. Do you have any questions regarding the process, regarding the papers? Maybe you don't know, we have cool ideas, but you don't know how to start with, with proposing a paper? Yes, Robin? Today, of course. I can provide you the copy with that. So you can send that over email? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Can you post it on Stack? Can I post it, can I post it on Stack? Yeah, I can post the, 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 the presentation on Stack uh, on Slack and, and, and then everyone will have access to it. But I also think that organizers will also get PDFs from, from the presenters and will publish them or not. Robin, you know something? Ah, okay. So, yeah, okay, I will provide it today <laughs> to everyone. Uh, is this slow in the in? Sorry, understand? Yeah, uh, m most of those features were already voted in and merged to the standard. Uh, only two features were, was, were marked as working progress. These were the library <laughs> concepts that uh, and this heterogeneous lookup uh, stuff. Those are accepted by evolution groups, so they are accepted that the, the features are, are fine, but still wording is not processed by the wording groups. Is it, is your list a comprehensive list of all the features in C++ mm. Is it a comprehensive list of features? I think yes. There were some smaller bug fixes and other stuff, but those are basically fixes for the C++ 17, yes? Uh, did I? Well, maybe I'm mistaken. I thought that it was voted in, or maybe it's in the the Okay. Oh, did you default? Yeah, we 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 had. We, yeah, I mentioned about default constructable lambdas and uh, default assignable lambdas that that are possible to to be passed in a type name for the type. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. Sorry, I. Reflex. Pr uh, reflection uh, basically is uh, is working progress. Uh, we, as I saw you saw you on the first slide, we created a new technical specification okay. for it. It will not end end up in C plus plus twenty, but we expect technical specification to be published in C plus plus twenty timeframe, and it will be probably merged into the C plus plus twenty three. Uh, we can, yeah, you, you, you can find me after the presentation and we can discuss stuff that is being work in progress in the, comi comi on in the committee. I have other slides for, for modules, for, 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 for reflex and so on, because I'm doing slides, as I said, as my notes. But, but as this is still work in progress, uh, subject to change, I, I didn't want to share it yet for the wider audience. Any other questions? We have like 45 seconds. <laughs> If not, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.